Hi everybody, welcome to Big Valley Living. I'm Michelle and I am super excited to be a part of Canuary this year. Yes, it's Canuary. Can you believe how fast the year went? We've been invited by Lisa at Sutton's Days. This collaboration will be running for the entire month of January and it's sponsored by Four Jars and by Lisa Sutton at Sutton's Days. We are so excited again to be a part of this. We really like marinated mushrooms. We only have two half pints left from last year and we love having these on the shelf because they're great in a salad, they're great on a charcuterie board or just as a snack. If you want a low carb lunch, this is your thing. This is going to be a recipe that is steam canned or water bath canned if you haven't steam canned yet. And we got the recipe directly from the USDA Complete Guide to Home Canning. This is the picture of the book. And if you don't have the book, you can go online to their website, which we'll drop in the description below, and you can just print out the recipe to use as you need it. I'm also going to be listing all of the channels that will be a part of this collaboration, and you'll wanna make sure you go and watch all of them. On January 31st, you're gonna to wanna to be sure to tune in to Sutton's Days at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when there will be a giveaway and it's all based on your comments. There's a random comment picker that will be coming on and that is how you will be chosen as a potential winner. I'm also linking Lisa's announcement video in my description box so that you can go and see all of the exciting prizes that will be given away during this collaboration. What we're going to start with are button mushrooms, these little white mushrooms. Very important. What you want to do is to select little button mushrooms that are no, no wider than one and a quarter inches in diameter, and you want them to be tight. See that? I do want to let you know that seven pounds of mushrooms fits perfectly into a 12 quart stock pot and that is not enough room for the headspace to boil them, so I'll be using a larger stock pot for boiling. I have two, this is called a that's a bowl from Tupperware. So I've got two of these full of mushrooms. I just wanna show you a couple things before I get busy and get all my mushrooms cleaned. Now, I told you that you needed to have um, a closed tight cap. This, this is closed, right? It's not open. I'm gonna be cutting one, to a one quarter inch, so I'm gonna call that about one quarter inch right there. And I'm just gonna be putting these into a bowl. I'm gonna put them in cold water actually. But what I wanna show you is this. This has no stem and the gills are open, right? So I'm gonna put that where I'm putting the bottoms of my stems. And I'm gonna keep those off to the side so that we can make a mushroom broth with the discards, okay, and with the stems. And then that can be used in soups and stews or uh, to make rice. I'm gonna take the solids after I make my broth and I have a freeze dryer, so I am not going to waste anything because I will make uh, mushroom powder out of it. Mushrooms are loaded with vitamins and minerals that are good for our bodies and help us fight off diseases such as cancer and heart disease, and I'm not gonna throw anything away. So again, this is a good cap right here, okay? And this one, is questionable, I'll probably use it. However, this you're not gonna use at all, okay? Just want you to see the difference between what you wanna use and what you don't wanna use. This guy is a definite broth mushroom. We're not using this one to can these. It's also um, a little bit bigger than an inch and a quarter in diameter, so it's a, it's gonna be good in something else, folks. Okay, we have all of our cleaned mushrooms in the water, and now the next part of the instructions is to put the mushrooms into a pot and fill with water and one half cup of lemon juice. Now, something you need to understand is that even if you have a tree full of lemons, like I do, you need to use bottled lemon juice, okay? Because the acidity is adjusted properly 
and if you use homegrown lemons, you might not get the right acidity. Mushrooms are a low acid food, so technically, they're, when they're plain, you're going to have to pressure cook them. So we have to have the right amount of acid going in and preparing these mushrooms in order to make a water bath process safe to put on the shelf and, and safe to feed ourselves and our family and friends. Now we're gonna start moving quickly. The mushrooms are gonna be coming up to a boil and as soon as they do, I will bring them down to a simmer for five minutes. In a saucepan, I am adding two cups of olive oil. I use um, a high quality local olive oil. You can also use salad oil and uh, we have actually used Crisco oil before and it was just fine. But this is a decadent treat so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Now we also have two and a half cups of white vinegar. Just like the lemon juice you need to make sure you use the right type of vinegar. It must have 5% humidity. <laughs> it must have 5% acidity. That might be a... <laughs> Are you sure that's not humidity? Then we're gonna use one tablespoon of dried basil, one tablespoon of dried oregano. We like Mexican oregano, but either will do. And one teaspoon of canning salt. You don't want to use table salt or iodized salt here because it has anti-caking agents that can cloud the product that you can. You want these to be as pretty as pretty can be before you open them up for yourself, your friends, your family, or if you're really generous, is if you give it as a gift. All right, guys, so we, uh, we came, brought this up to a boil, simmered it for five minutes. Now, ordinarily, you would drain the uh, broth from the mushrooms, drop, okay? So I wanna save that and actually, oh, that's not working out pretty, but that's okay. I actually wanna save that broth to make a mushroom-heavy vegetable broth. So what I'm doing is I'm using a spider to pull the hot mushrooms out and it's just draining into a, a bowl here. But I'm gonna add all of the discard mushrooms and the bottoms, the stems, to this water. I'm gonna add a little bit of carrots and celery and garlic and stuff. And um, we're gonna make some nice mushroom broth that we can can and use for other meals in the future. It actually makes a really nice sipping broth too. So that's why we're doing it this way. A few mushrooms I can throw in there. Everything's clean. All right, so I'm gonna put this here and then um, before we go away from here, I wanna show you that we actually have um, all of our jars in very, very hot water. This is a hot pack. We have hot mushrooms, hot jars, okay? I've checked them all. Might as well do this. I've checked them all to make sure they're clean and sterilized. Nobody has a crack. And I have 12 jars. That is really hot water. Whoa. 12 jars, just in case we need them all. I have my four jars lids, according to manufacturer's instructions, heating up on the stove in a little saucepan. And um, now we're going to go put the rest of the sauce together. <laughs> Can you see me? <laughs> anyway, we're going to put the rest of the sauce together. Um, the marinade, and we're gonna get to can, and we are almost done, I'm so excited. And we're gonna add a half a cup of finely diced onions. I'm using yellow onions, and woo baby, did they get me in the eyeballs earlier. All right, it's really helpful to just have everything ready when you do it, and our quarter cup of pimentos. So I've got this turned up to seven on my electric stove, because we need to bring this up to a boil and we have to keep the oil and the vinegar really well mixed, okay? Because again, you don't usually can with any kind of vegetable oil, any kind of oil, really. Um, so this is an unusual recipe, but one that is worth doing using every single step. So I'm gonna let that heat up. I just wanted to get it as incorporated as possible for now. 
At the same time, I want to let you know, oops, that we have three burners going on the stove. I'm getting pretty sloppy there, huh? Okay, one of them, and you can see it, are my lids. Now I'm gonna turn that down to about four on my electric stove. And then the other thing that we have going is our, um, our steam canner. Now, I'm going to tell you all that you need to follow the instructions for your steam canner. We always keep every manual to every one of our canners inside of the canner once it's been cleaned and it's put on the shelf. All of its inserts, all of the instructions are always in the pan. We always review the instructions before we can. I don't care if we do it week to week to week. We always check everything. Um, it, with a steam canner and as well with a pressure canner, always test your canner according to the manufacturer's instructions prior to canning anything, okay? So it's very, very important that you do that. You need to follow these instructions as well as, as the instructions that are put forth by like the USDA canning and um, preserving guidelines. Safe canning is what we're all about, folks. Okay, so I have this warming up and it'll take a few minutes. Meanwhile, I have prepared two big garlic cloves. Actually, I took four because I wanted to make sure I had enough if we have extra mushrooms of garlic cloves. And so I have those already sitting aside and they're over in my canning station. I also have 25 to 26 black peppercorns, okay? And those are gonna go in the actual jars. Okay, guys, this is at a boil. Now we need to keep this agitated okay it needs to stay together we don't want like the oil and the vinegar to separate we're going to set up our canning station right next to the stove oops so that we can keep this oil uh, and vinegar mixture going as we're filling each one of our jars it's very important that we don't let it separate so tools we're gonna to use real quickly. We have this uh, strainer spoon, okay, slotted spoon, but we've already drained the mushrooms, so that would be really best used if you were using a large pot with water in it. We have this um, really nice scoopy spoon to use for our marinade mixture. We're gonna be putting two to three peppercorns per, one, two, three per jar, a nice little slice of garlic, and then we're gonna fill it with mushrooms. Oops, there's one more thing that's really important, you guys. There we go. And that is our funnel. I'm gonna show it to you so that you can see it. That's our funnel, and it has measuring spaces. Okay, so this is gonna be a half inch head space when all is said and done. So I'm gonna take it up to about one inch and then I'm gonna whisk that oil mixture. Every time I get ready to put some in, I'm gonna do this every time. And I'm gonna get this real quickly and we're gonna put that marinade in there. Now it's not gonna take much, okay? So I'm gonna look at it from overhead. I'm gonna to go to the half inch head space. And then you can use what's called a pokey joe, but I'm actually gonna, I like to use a chopstick, a reusable chopstick here, it's bamboo. Works really nicely. And we're gonna make sure we get that mixed up. We don't want any air bubbles in here. And then that may have it settle down, okay? So if it does, we would be adding more liquid. Oh my gosh, but as luck would have it, I am sitting on a perfect jar here. Okay, now we are at a half inch head space. We're gonna take a clean cloth and we're gonna dip it in white vinegar. And we're gonna go around the edge, oops. We're gonna go around the edge of this jar until we have absolutely 
no residual. I don't want to see anything, and I don't care how many paper towels I need to use. If there is any barrier whatsoever, even microscopic, that you cannot see, that can cause a failure, okay? Now, I'm going to take my jars, uh, my lids, and I have this little handy dandy magnet, and I'm going to place the magnet on top of my jar. I'm going to take one of my clean rings and I'm going to make it fingertip tight. Now I'm going to borrow this from mouse toes, limp wrist, hold on to this until you get resistance. That's it. Okay, we're done. Now, into the canner it goes. It, into the canner it goes. Yes, it's very hot. I have tough on hands. And we're going to put it into the steamer, which is now steaming. Hot jars, hot food, hot liquid, hot canner. Oops. I might be employing my husband's help for this one. Now, I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to get busy on this and get them done. So we're taking a hot jar. We're going to take... Oops, we're gonna take one, two, three peppercorns. We're gonna take a lovely slice of garlic. We're gonna put it in there. Now we're going to put our funnel on. We're gonna fill with mushrooms. That might be a little too much, so I'm actually just gonna reach in when the, if my fingers are clean. Okay, now I'm going to take the whisk and I'm gonna whisk that mixture. Every single time we fill the jar, we're gonna do this. Then we're going to take some of the hot liquid. Oh, it smells so good in here, you guys. It's almost like an Italian dressing, really, at the end of the day. Okay, so we're gonna take our uh, pokey joe, or in this case, chopstick. And we're going to make sure that we get all the bubbles out. Now that did adjust the liquid down a little bit. So I'm gonna add just the tiniest bit of liquid. And see, I'm, just, I'm gonna mix it up again, just a little bit, because we really wanna keep that mixture perfect. Okay, oh, that's nice. One more pokey joe. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, I'm going to take this off of here. I'm going to take my rag. I am going to dip it in vinegar, white vinegar. I'm going to go around the rim. I don't want to see any oil. I don't want to see any of the peppers or the, pardon me, the pimentos. You want it clean, clean, clean. Okay, oops. Now. I rub that, now that's gonna happen to you every now and again too. So if you dip into there, you wanna make sure that you come back around and be sure that you didn't miss anything. There we go, nice. Now I'm gonna take my lid. Our steam canner is just begging to get everything in there. Okay, we're gonna put that on there. Make sure you get those lids on nice and straight, okay? Boom, done, and into the canner it goes. Isn't that gorgeous? I don't want to tip, never tip your jars, okay? Okay, we had 11 half pints, yay us. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the lid on the steam canner. And according to manufacturer's instructions, we're gonna let it come up to the green zone or you know the the zone that we need it to be in in our case it is this dark green zone but you need to check your instructions on your machine and account for your altitude and everything else okay so don't follow our instructions check your altitude and your equipment once we come up to the proper temperature um, and proper steam, we are going to be processing for 20 minutes. Now, if you were water bath canning, you'd wanna make sure you had at least one and a half to two inches of water 
over the top of your jars. When it comes to a boil, that's when you start timing your 20 minute process and then you want to regulate your temperature. You don't want a vigorous boil, but you do want a boil. And then time it for 20 minutes. And at that point, you can turn off the water and let it sit for at least 10 to 15 minutes, okay? Not all night, just 10 to 15 minutes. Then cock your lid a little bit to let a little bit of the steam escape. Give it another five or 10 minutes. And then you can remove your jars and put them on a heat safe pad. Don't put them directly on a counter or a stove top because the shock of the hot jar on a cool counter could very easily mean that your jar is gonna crack. After 20 minutes of processing, we left the lid on. We left it on for 10 minutes. You must leave the lid on, water bath or steam canning, for a minimum of five minutes to ensure that it has the proper processing time. Now you'll see that as JJ is bringing the jars out, he is not tipping them. Yes, there's water on top. And here in a minute or two, I could take a paper towel and just dab that extra water off, but do not tip your jars, okay? That can compromise the seal and make all that work that you did kind of just go away. And you do not want to take any chances. Oh my gosh, those look so good. So what we're going to do is let them sit, give them a little bit of room like that between the jars. And again, we set them on a, a hot pad and let them sit for 12 to 24 hours. And if any are not sealed by morning, I will actually be putting it into the refrigerator and we'll just consume them within a couple of days. I don't see a problem though where they're not gonna seal. So what we're going to do now is we're going to clean all of our jars. I wanna show you these rings are loose. I'm going to press up on these lids to make sure that they have sealed properly. And I'm gonna give them a good push, okay? And then each one is gonna get a good bath in hot, soapy water. I'll rinse them off, pull them out, label the lids, and then we are gonna put these jars on the shelf. Now, when you make something that's marinated like this, my recommendation is to let them sit for about two to three weeks. They're really good right off the shelf, but they get better with age. So. Well, let's go ahead and clean them up. And once again, thank you so much to Lisa at Sutton's Days and Four Jars for sponsoring Canuary 2024. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. See you later, everybody. Be kind. Mm -hmm.